Is it really possible to have a dinner ready in 15 minutes? In this video we're gonna find that out. Hello everyone, my name is Farrakhan and in this video we're gonna do some cooking and we're gonna find out whether it's possible to have a meal ready in 15 minutes because that's what a lot of these cooking videos on YouTube claim when it comes to these 15, 20 or 25 minute cooking videos but I do have to say that most of those videos they all start already totally prepped up uh, so I wanted to make a video where I literally just come, came back from work did some groceries washing my hands and then let's get cooking after work I visited Amazing Oriental which is an Asian toko and I knew that I had some white rice at home still so I looked for some protein and this time I went with some tempeh and I bought some enoki mushrooms usually when I cook um, I do have to say it's a bit more functional so I always look at it in a way of uh, some kind of a protein some kind of carbs and then some veggies uh, so in this case I'm taking white rice I start at half past six so let's see how long it's going to take I start with the rice because I know it takes some time for the rice to cook. Uh, so the first thing I do is start washing the white rice. I do this about two to three times. Uh, there's a huge difference when you do or do not wash rice. So I definitely don't skip this step when you're using a rice cooker and making this Asian style white rice. I use the bowl of the rice cooker itself and wash the rice in that. One of the things that I also try to do when it comes to cooking is just minimize the amount of uh, things I make dirty so it helps in not having to do too many dishes afterwards. But I think it's also something I'm used to because I didn't have a dishwasher for a very long time and uh, that meant having to clean everything by hand. Uh, now I do have a dishwasher but I still try to minimize the amount of things uh, that I'm using in the kitchen. So if you don't have a dishwasher, this video is also for you. As I said, I try to wash it about two to three times once the water turns um, a bit more transparent. So without the white uh, starch of the rice, uh, you know that you're good to go. And always, always add some uh, salt to the rice. And then add about one to two centimeters water on top of the rice. In this case, um, I think because it is the first time I'm actually recording myself cooking anything, maybe I was a little bit nervous and I noticed I put quite a lot of rice and also a bit too much water. Uh, so I could have put a little bit less water and especially with a rice cooker. That's the nice thing with a rice cooker is you don't have to look at it and 98% of the time you have a really good rice afterwards and you don't have to worry about it. And in this case the tempeh, I'm going to prepare that in the air fryer. The nicest, the most delicious way is just by frying it in a pan. Uh, but it's also not too healthy and you, you, you do use quite a lot of oil for that. So in this case I decided to go with the air fryer and prepare the um, tempeh and in both cases I always do the things that I know is going to take a long time so with the rice first prepare the rice and then secondly the tempeh that's going to need to go into the air fryer that will also take some time so I make sure to first do those two things when it comes to the tempeh I cut it in little pieces the smaller you cut them the faster they get crispy in the air fryer uh, so I cut them in small pieces but uh, looking back at this video I could have even cut them smaller than this and uh, so definitely if you don't want to wait too long and you want to and you do like crispiness uh, cut them even smaller than this uh, that will help you uh, a lot in reducing the time uh, you have to put them in the air fryer So 
So again, with the cooking here, I'm not 100% sure what I'm going to make yet. Um, usually it starts with, as I said, with some kind of a protein, some kind of carb. And I always start dishes with some kind of uh, whole spices and some garlic, some onion, add some veggies and then add some kind of the protein. It's simple, but it works and usually you get a 7.5 or an 8 out of 10 meal at the very end. And as I said, this is the first time I'm actually recording uh, all of it with a DJI. Uh, so I had to move things around. Um, I had another camera set up, but somehow I didn't press on record. So, you know, these things happen. It's the first time. So I put the tempeh in the air fryer. I do this in batches so it uh, fries a bit faster. And I also add some olive oil. I have this spray that I bought, which is quite handy. Um, it helps a little bit with crisping, making it a bit more crispy in the air fryer as well. And then after that, I uh, have a strainer, which I'll put the tempeh in later. Now that the tempeh is in the air fryer and the rice started cooking, we're gonna uh, slice some onions. I'm not a fan of these very small onions um, because yeah, it does take more time, uh, but we can barely find uh, big onions here anymore in the Netherlands. Uh, but I do prefer the red onions, it adds a bit more color and somehow I also like to taste a little bit more of these red onions. And then when it comes to peeling these uh, onions, I also got rid of the outer layer. Uh, yes, you can eat it, but I think in general in a stir fry, um, it's not too nice, it's a bit too uh, hard. Um, but yeah, you could use it uh, for a stock or anything else. So I cut the onion uh, in half. And for this dish, again, it's really uh, looking at um, yeah how much you want to use. It's never a, like I never cook in a way of like, okay, you need like 100 grams of onions and then you need like 50 grams of this. Everything is based on feel. Uh, so I also look at, okay, this is the amount of tempeh that I have, then probably two or three small onions would work with this amount of tempeh that I have and the amount of veggies that I'm going to use. I slice these onions uh, very thinly so that it also uh, gets a bit of a crisp towards the end and... Yeah, it's a bit of a personal preference, but I do like some crispiness when it comes to food. That's also why I like this method of uh, air frying the tempeh, uh, because you get this crispy edge. And afterwards, you can use some kind of a sauce that sticks to the tempeh. Uh, otherwise, you have this very soft tempeh, which I'm personally not a huge fan of. I still like it, but I definitely uh, prefer a more crispy tempeh. But then also it's still uh, healthy because of course I could put the tempeh in some kind of a batter and like, you know, you can make these uh, uh, kind of like Korean uh, fried chicken uh, uh, style tempeh, but that also means it's not too healthy and yeah, we also have to think about our health. Uh, so as I said before, I start with some mustard seeds and already turn the pan on so it can uh, start heating up. I use some fennel seeds, some anise seeds. So I put them all in the pan again, just a little bit. It's really on feel again here as well. And at the end, some coriander seeds. And I do that uh, because, uh, yeah, to release the aromas of those whole spices. And afterwards, um, I look in the fridge and see what I have. Again here, I have some celery left, I have some mint left that's going almost bad. And I also notice that I have some lemons, which are always good to use to counterbalance balance all of the other things. And I have one bell pepper left in yellow. 
so I also am gonna use all of that in the pan and for this dish I'm also using simply one pan uh, I could do two pans and you know uh, prepare them in different ways and in the end you'll get a little bit of a better result but sometimes it's also about the effort like do I really want to use two or three more pans add much more time to uh, my cooking uh, and also in the end of cleaning the entire kitchen uh, so I'm really a fan of uh, mostly just cooking with one pan and in the end uh, ending up with a dish that's uh, that's delicious and that I enjoy and in this case I chose to use some butter to give it a little bit more taste uh, because I'm not frying the tempeh so in this case you do have a little bit of that nice flavor from the butter and then the onions and I, and I let that slowly um, cook in the pan so here I'm checking the tempeh and I notice it's still quite white uh, so that means it still uh, needs some time and here I also notice the uh, celery is uh, almost going bad so I'm trying to use some of this celery as well washing it first and then I'll add it to the pan later as well and celery uh, is a great addition uh, as a first starter uh, for these stir fried dishes so I always use some kind of onions celery uh, but also if I had it I would use maybe some carrots and those are great flavor enhancers to put in the beginning I mostly cut them in very thin uh, pieces and again, it really comes down to time again. Um, yeah, you could even uh, slice them thinner. I don't think it matters too much. So I make, first make sure that uh, the onions are um, in the pan only. Especially with uh, yeah the butter and slowly uh, having that on the fire is good. And then of course the question is, uh, does it matter if I first put in the garlic and then the onion, or the onion and then the garlic, or at the same time? Again, I think it doesn't matter too much, um, but I do think it's nice if you put it a bit more towards the beginning. And when it comes to these uh, garlic cloves, uh, it does take some time again every time to uh, yeah, cut these on, uh, garlic cloves. And uh, one way to save time here is to actually have like a ginger garlic paste, which I usually have in the fridge that I make on my own. So it's literally some ginger, garlic, some curcuma and olive oil. Uh, but in this case, I didn't have it. And again here, uh, I'm also again used to not using too many utensils because I hated doing the dishes. So I would just use a knife. And what I do is I just add a little bit of uh, salt and cut the garlic in small pieces. But I also like actually cutting. It's something, there's something therapeutic about yeah just cutting uh, veggies but also the garlic in this case which is uh, which I like and enjoy a lot after uh, working uh, the entire day so again uh, trying to see if the tempeh is ready it does take more time than I uh, expected uh, so in the meantime I make sure to already cut the bell pepper So I was not sure if I already washed this bell pepper, but because I'm recording it, I thought it might be a good idea to do so. Folks, make sure to always wash your veggies. Again, cut them into small pieces and then after uh, cutting the bell peppers, uh, we're gonna put them in the pan together with the celery as well. And if you do have different bell peppers, always go for the other color so if you already have something yellow or green go for the red one if you already have something red go for the yellow one I would say but in my case I only had a yellow bell pepper left
And another tip from me is to always use a big cutting board. It really, really helps a lot uh, when you're cutting things. So the first batch of the tempeh is ready and I'll put the second batch in there in the air fryer. Now I'm putting the second batch of tempeh in the air fryer and this should take a little bit less time because it's already uh, heating up. But the first batch, um, it could have stayed a bit longer. I think the browner it is, the more crispy, uh, the more delicious the meal at the end. Uh, now I put all the rest of the veggies in the pan. So I have the uh, whole spices, the onions, the garlic, the celery and the bell pepper. And then I also had some mint and it was almost going bad so I also wanted to use that. And with most of the things when I cook, um, I will take it out, especially things that are going bad and I'll see what to do with them. I, I either add it to the stir fry or I might uh, make some sauce with it. I'm mixing all of the uh, veggies, so the celery, uh, yellow bell pepper and the uh, onions. So everything is being cooked properly and it's on medium high heat. And I also add a little bit more of oil here. Again, everything is on feel, so just have a look. If you think uh, it's sticking to the pan, add a bit of oil. In this case, I'm using a non-stick uh, pan from Le Creuset. Uh, I would actually recommend to use a stainless steel pan. Um, And what I'm doing here is uh, I realized that both the tempeh and the rice, it still takes quite some time. Uh, I did feel also to make some sauce and I knew that I still had some yogurt left in the fridge that also uh, would go bad maybe after the day or maybe two days afterwards. And normally I would of course lick the yogurt off this lid, but I'm recording it. So let's be civilized about it. Again, no need for a new bowl in my uh, opinion, just make it in the packaging itself. Here I'm adding some mustard and after that, again, if I had some ginger garlic paste, I would have added that, uh, but I didn't have that and I still need to make some. So here I'm uh, just getting two garlic cloves and I'm going to add that to the sauce to make some kind of like a garlic, uh, yeah, like a garlic sauce. And here I also realized I could use that mint actually for the sauce as well. So that's a good uh, way to use that mint. And it adds uh, a lot of freshness to the sauce. Uh, and of course, when it comes to like, if you want to call it Asian style cooking or tempeh, you know, which is Indonesian, um, yogurt based uh, sauce are not really a thing. Uh, but who cares, you know, the rules are, uh, it, it's your dish. Uh, just do whatever makes you happy and I think uh, it actually complements pretty well with uh, these kind of dishes where you have the heavy uh, soy sauce, the tempeh and uh, the white rice. Then having some kind of a yogurt uh, uh, based sauce actually works really well. So I'm gonna add all of the uh, mint and the garlic into the sauce and in between i will always always make sure to um, yeah taste it because i do everything on feel and sometimes your feel might be off on the day uh, so i'm also adding a bit of mayo and then adding also some curry ketchup if you have regular ketchup that would also work and all of this, um, I know that it in general works really well together. Um, so, but even then I still, um, yeah, test and make sure it, uh, it tastes good because it could miss a little bit of uh, salt or some acidity. And you have to really uh, get a balance uh, for all of the dishes that you're making. In the meantime, also clean up a little bit. And again, checking up on the 
tempeh and yes it does take a long time i'm not sure if it's because i'm cooking and i have a feeling that normally it wouldn't take that much time but yeah i did feel that it was not going too fast i'm also adding some lemon squeezing some lemon in the uh, sauce You do want the sauce to be a bit thick, but not too thick. So I just uh, thinned it out with a little bit of almond milk here. And then at the end, I'm also adding a bit of paprika powder and a little bit of black pepper. That also really helps in the flavor. And again, with these kind of things, it's just see what works for you. Sometimes I would add some rosemary, sometimes some oregano. Um, Anything with these spices kind of help uh, and enhance, enhance the flavor. And then mixing it well is really, really important. If you have the time, which in this video, we're not about uh, making dishes where we take the time. But if you have time, make this also a bit beforehand and leave it in the fridge for an hour. This also really helps in enhancing the uh, flavor of the sauce. But at least mixing it really well. Um, I'm not effing uh, Shibowski or whatever that YouTuber is called, but if I would do like a A-B testing of the sauce, I think you would, uh, we would see a big difference uh, when you eat a sauce uh, right away or a sauce that was like uh, an hour in the fridge. But then the sauce does need a little bit of spice and that really, really adds uh, a little bit of umami. So we're done with the sauce uh, that we can use uh, towards the end and the tempeh should also hopefully almost be ready uh, the veggies are still cooking on low heat so we're gonna make the final sauce for that i'm looking for cornstarch and that final uh, sauce will help in uh, whenever we add the tempeh to the pan with all of the veggies uh, that sauce will stick to the tempeh and it makes it the one cohesive uh, dish which really really enhances the flavor because when we take the tempeh out of the air fryer of course it doesn't have any seasoning anything at all and tempeh luckily compared to tofu it does have some taste uh, but yeah you do still need some kind of a sauce or some kind of thing that uh, goes with it and in this case, that's why I'm uh, using this cornstarch in combination with water. Uh, normally, again, you would make two different sauces. Just use the cornstarch with water. Uh, but I'm lazy, so I just take a cup. I add some water. I add some lemon juice. I also add uh, some soy sauce, some sesame oil, and even sesame seeds. Here I'm looking actually for a honey, but... I think I ran out of honey or I couldn't find it um, so any kind of sugar or like uh, maple syrup I'm, I'm using maple syrup in this uh, yeah in this uh, as, as a substitute that also works uh, but usually honey I think uh, works really really well and you could even add some honey at, at the end uh, and it really resembles like those um, Chinese uh, dishes with like honey pepper chicken But here I'm adding some uh, sesame oil and a little bit of soy sauce and with sesame oil I know in general that this is also something that you add towards the end and you don't want to uh, yeah, cook uh, the veggies uh, for more than 5 or 10 minutes with sesame oil. It's really towards the end so it retains some of that uh, flavor as well. And again here adding the sesame seeds. I also bought this from Amazing Oriental that day and then mixing it together. And that is needed for the corn starch and then finally also checking up on the rice uh, i'm not sure if i mentioned it before in the video but i think i did add a bit too much water in the rice cooker so that also took much more time than i wanted i really like enoki mushrooms for two things like firstly of course they're very healthy but secondly also i really really love the texture 
and it's great for any stir fry just to add it. It immediately um, gets all of the flavor uh, onto the, to it, and it's also a nice uh, low carb uh, or a low um, low calorie protein actually. Adding a little bit of uh, ketchup manis. And then also putting the heat a little bit higher again. So we're already uh, 24 minutes in. As you see, time flies. Uh, we still have to add in the tempeh and the sauce. Uh, but those last steps actually don't take too much time. Uh, so I can already start preparing the plate and then also slowly already uh, clean up a little bit so we don't have too much uh, we don't have to spend too much time on cleaning up afterwards checking the sauce once again and here I'm basically waiting for the tempeh and the rice uh, both of them of course are uh, yeah very important and also both of them took more time than I wanted. The veggies also need a little bit of spice. I love spicy food. Uh, I don't like extreme spice but I think some kind of spice always really really helps in improving the overall flavor. So I'm taking out the second batch of the tempeh. Uh, I'm really not too happy with it because it's not too crispy, uh, but it will do its job. It's fine, uh, to especially uh, we're gonna cook it a little bit more uh, in the pan. And I'm also taking out the rice right now and I add a towel on top of it. I don't know why, but uh, for me, uh, it helps. So we're gonna also uh, turn up the heat on the induction stove that I'm using and add the tempeh to it. And this final step, it really uh, incorporates and uh, makes it, uh, ties it all together. Uh, so all of that flavor from the onions, the garlic, uh, the spices, it all uh, yeah, enters the tempeh almost and I make sure that, uh, yeah, to stir it up a bit. And then afterwards, we're gonna uh, add the sauce. So, but before that, really make sure the pan is hot because that cornstarch with water, it will only react uh, when it comes uh, in contact with a hot surface. Uh, and also adding a bit more salt to it, or maybe a little bit more. Again, whisking it very well because of that cornstarch which reacts with the water and then uh, it will actually, yeah, it will make it all in, a, in this substance where it becomes sticky, like a sticky tempeh uh, and this really, really enhances the flavor. So now all that you need to do is just make sure you mix it very well and you can see that all of that sauce is binding itself together to all of the veggies and the tempeh. And once you're done with that, actually, you can already lower the heat. And I didn't do it in this step, but finally to yeah, top off this dish, what I really like is adding maybe some coriander or some uh, fresh leaves uh, to top it off. Uh, but I didn't have that, so for this dish, uh, we can skip it. And then we can put it on the lower heat and just let it uh, cook a little bit more. Of course, always uh, do a taste test. Um, I always end up uh, having these things, uh, yeah, like adding, uh, I always end up having to add some salt. Uh, but of course, because you're adding quite a lot of like uh, soy sauce and then the sambal, the, like all of these things are quite salty. Uh, yeah, so to be careful, like always test it really well and see if it's good. 
especially if you're not following uh, any kind of recipe. So the uh, dish is approved. Uh, I think it's a uh, seven out of ten, maybe a seven and a half. Of course, uh, it could have been much much better if we also had more time, uh, but that's fine. Again, also for the rice, it's a little bit too moist, so I'm not uh, very proud of the rice here. Uh, but again, it does work and it is actually nicer if you rest uh, the rice for at least 15 minutes. So it also gets uh, rid of that moisture a bit more. And then we're going to top it off with the tempeh on top and then a bit of the garlic sauce on top as well. So that took about 30 minutes from start to end. Uh, from the moment I picked up the rice cooker until I uh, put the white rice, the tempeh with the veggies and the sauce on my plate. So is it possible to prepare a meal in 15 minutes? From scratch, I don't think so. Uh, unless, of course, you can save some time with the ginger garlic paste that I mentioned. Um, but you would already need some kind of a carb ready, such as the white rice. The sauce could be ready. So I think it is possible in about 20-25 minutes. Um, but there's of course also all of the cleaning. I'm going to get a second plate of food, enjoy that, and afterwards clean up, um, prepare some of the food for tomorrow. So that's it. If you like this video, please give it a like. If you love it, please subscribe on the channel. And if you have any questions or comments or things you liked or you don't like at all, you can always leave a comment. See you in the next one. Ciao, ciao, bye bye.